Tonight, Texas executes a man in the 2010 death of a North Texas woman. We hear from an expert about the effect a recession would have on our housing market. Plus, the reason why prosecutors say they cannot return the Bible of a woman charged with murder in the deaths of five infants. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, streaming live here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Courtney Friedman, in for Myra Arthur. Tonight, the state of Texas executed a sixth man this year. Mark Solis was put to death for the 2010 robbery and murder of a North Texas woman. Solis and his lawyers had long argued that his life should be spared because he had fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. They claimed it was the functional equivalent of an intellectual disability. Solis used his final words to apologize to the victim's family. The six Texas edu edu executions make up more than a third of the 15 that have taken place in the country this year. Nine more executions are scheduled in the state through December. Two lawsuits filed trying to stop the draining of multiple area lakes will be heard tomorrow morning in Guadalupe County. Near three, nearly 300 people are represented in those suits against the Guadalupe Blanco River Authority. The GBRA plans to drain Lake Gonzales, Meadow Lake, Lake Placid and Lake McQueenie in less than a week. The River Authority says it has no choice because of safety concerns surrounding dams on the lakes. While the issue now plays out in court, a state review determined months ago that GBRA was not properly managing its assets and noted its aging infrastructure. This is the moment that gave way to what's now an uncertain future for people living and working on several local lakes. That partial dam collapse on Lake Dunlap in May. It was after that the GBRA announced it would drain other area lakes because of concerns dams could fail there too and uncertainty over how the River Authority would pay for any possible repairs. In June, the state Sunset Advisory Commission released the final results of a previously planned review saying, quote, the GBRA has not implemented a comprehensive asset management process to ensure timely repair and replacement of its significant utility assets, leading to failed infrastructure and potential service disruptions for its customers. Also noting that some of the authority's infrastructure is failing, either in critical condition or beyond repair. Other findings include GBRA's procurement process and contracting efforts lack coordination and best practices needed to ensure adequate expertise and best value and that in general, river authorities lack certain good government standards that would enhance transparency, accountability, and compliance with state law. The Sunset Review did not solely focus on the GBRA. In 2015, the state legislature put 18 river authorities in Texas under Sunset Review. The report states that river authorities have historically received little state oversight. The Sunset Commission made several recommendations to fix the issues it found within the GBRA. In a written statement today, the GBRA said it immediately identified similar issues to those outlined in the Sunset Report in 2016 and agrees with the issues and recommendations and that the Sunset recommendations have been adopted and improvements continue to be implemented to ensure GBRA continues to follow good government standards. The Sunset Report also states that addressing the past is not enough, especially as the GBRA is working to quench the thirst of the basin's growing population along the I-35 corridor. And we will have a KSAT crew in the courtroom tomorrow as a judge hears those two lawsuits trying to stop the GBRA from draining those four lakes. How would San Antonio's housing market fare in the event of a recession? According to a recent study, not well, but the San Antonio Board of Realtors is pushing back against those findings. Sarah Costa spoke with the chair elect of the board who breaks down why they think that. What determines the strength of the housing market? Kim Bragman, the chair elect of the San Antonio Board of Realtors, says several factors, but some key components include comparing the average and median home prices to the year before. If there is a rapid large increase, that can mean the market is exploding, which could potentially mean a volatile future. She says you want a steady increase, which she believes San Antonio has. So our average price and median price compared to last year is only about 2.8%. It's a nice steady uh, increase. She believes if there was a recession in the future, the San Antonio housing market would be relatively safe. She attributes this to a steady unemployment rate, which was at 3.3% in July, along with San Antonio having strong high paying industries like biomedical sciences, the military and the rising tech industry. Our prices are steady, that they're not exploding. 
uh, the household incomes are steady, our unemployment rate. So I think Bear County and San Antonio is positioned very well uh, to ride out perhaps a, a recession. A recent report by Redfin, a national real estate agency, says otherwise, placing San Antonio in the top 10 cities for the housing market to be hurt most if a recession were to happen. It ranks San Antonio number nine in the nation for being in danger if a recession were to hit. The study bases this on a couple of factors, including home price volatility and the share of households over 65 years old. Bragman says this isn't data that is usually used to determine the housing market. I would question their metrics, to be honest with you. They really don't truly reflect where our market is. Now, Bragman does say there are areas of the city that she would call explosive, like some east side neighborhoods like Dignity Hill, Denver Heights, and Government Hill, and west side neighborhoods like Jefferson and Woodlawn Lake. But overall, she says the San Antonio market remains steady. Courtney. Thank you so much, Sarah. An update now tonight on the city's fight for paid sick leave. The city has made some changes in the hopes of saving the ordinance. This after a lawsuit led to the delay of the ordinance from August to December. Today, a special city count, a city commission suggested a few changes. The first proposed change, the name. The commission recommended it be called San Antonio Sick and Safe Leave Ordinance, or SSL for short. Another key change would involve creating a one size fits all approach. Instead of catering to companies of different sizes, all employees would be able to accrue a minimum of 56 hours of leave per year. And the delay for implementation reserved for businesses with five or fewer employers would no longer exist. Two meetings for public input would be held on September 23rd and 25th. City Council would also need to vote on those proposed changes. Let's turn now to some of the most interesting stories making headlines tonight. A school bus driver dead after a crash in Mississippi. Yet another death attributed to vaping related illnesses and pet owners in Norway desperate for answers after more than 20 dogs die from a mysterious illness. Here's tonight's nine at nine. Police believe a medical emergency is to blame for a deadly bus crash in Mississippi. The bus driver was killed and more than half a dozen children were hurt. Another death from lung disease related to vaping announced in Kansas. This brings the total number of deaths to six. At least 450 cases of severe lung disease potentially linked to vaping are being investigated. San Antonio police searching for a suspect in a northwest side drive by shooting. Police say a woman was inside her home on Lee Hall Street when several bullets were fired at the house. One of the bullets hit her in the arm. Her husband says he doesn't know why anyone would shoot at their house. I have no idea. I don't have a problem with nobody. I'm cool with everybody. A mystery illness is killing dogs in Norway. 25 dogs have died so far. The disease comes on quickly, with some pets dying before they even make it to the vet for treatment. Veterinarians have no idea what's causing it, but they have found two types of bacteria in several of the dogs that have died. A train derailment in Illinois sparks a massive fire. That fire forcing homes and schools in the area to evacuate. Here at home, a section of a southeast street collapses after an apparent water main break. This happened on Coal Glazer Street. A San Antonio water system spokesperson says they're expecting an increase in main breaks due to the hot, dry weather. The medium U.S. household income stayed flat in 2018. The U.S. Census Bureau released data showing medium income stayed around $63,000 last year despite a strong jobs report. This extremely rare two-tone lobster caught off the coast of Maine. The red and brown crustacean was given to the Maine Center for Coastal Fisheries and is now available for the public to visit. According to the University of Maine, the odds of finding this kind of lobster are one in 50 million. A new study found two naps a week can lower your risk of heart attack or stroke. Scientists looked at 3,500 people for five years and discovered a nap or two, no matter how long or short, releases stress from lack of sleep. To read more about these nine stories, just head to ksat.com slash news at nine. I'm a napper, so that's good news. Yeah, I was saying that's <laughs> that's my Saturday and Sunday after I work the morning shift and take a nap, so. I'm with you. I'm good to go. Well, you know what I noticed today? Not only that was hot again, but the wind was really picking up today. Yeah, there was quite a bit of breeze, yeah. especially cooler breezes from mm -hmm. distant showers and storms. And so if you didn't get 
the rain, uh, you're going to have another chance to do so tomorrow. Let's take a look at the time lapse. You can see a couple of showers there passing by on the time lapse. 96 was the high today. Nothing officially recorded at the airport, unfortunately, as far as rainfall goes, but areas even just uh, as close to San Antonio as Leon Springs got in some cases an inch uh, of rainfall. So again, we did have spotty showers and storms out there and we'll continue to have the chance for that tomorrow, especially in the afternoon as well. This is a look at today's rain. You can see how scattered it was in nature. A good amount west of San Antonio, decent amount east. Unfortunately, around Bear County itself, just a couple of stray showers and storms working their way in, including one that went up I-10 uh, toward the Leon Springs area that dropped a decent amount of rain uh, off to the east as well. Here's a look at the rainfall estimates from today. Again, you look up toward Leon Springs, about three quarters of an inch of rain, Bernie about a quarter, uh, New Braunfels about half, and then Seguin got about three quarters of an inch of rainfall as well. Better rain, much better rain west of San Antonio and parts of Bandera County an inch and a half uh, near uh, the uh, south of Uvalde and uh, the uh, the prior area about two inches of rain. So again, that was some good rain that has since fallen apart. Temperatures are much cooler though. It's 79 in San Antonio right now and tonight those temperatures will fall uh, into the low 70s by the morning tomorrow. So good news. So why are we seeing the rain, the spotty rain? Well, this week's weather setup is a little bit interesting. We've got a trough of low pressure bringing some upper level energy really funneling in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. And so again, that's why tomorrow we will have a chance for scattered showers and storms. I think coverage will be slightly greater tomorrow, as you can see on the high res future cast. So we're going to go about 40% chance for showers and storms in the afternoon. Once we lose that daytime heating, our rain chance will shut off. 95 only for the high tomorrow because of the added cloud cover and the 40% chance for rain. Breezy at times, southeast winds at 10 to 15. And then in the next several days, we're going to see our rain chances taper off, unfortunately. And by the weekend, we'll be in the upper 90s and plenty of sunshine, Courtney. So tomorrow is the day. If you did not see rain, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed for tomorrow. Fingers crossed for those folks who get it. Yes. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Sarah. Stay with us. We'll be back in just one minute. When so-called killer nurse Janine Jones was serving a life sentence in the death of a Kerrville child in 1982, her Bible was seized during a sweep of her cell. Jones now wants that Bible back. She's behind bars in the Bear County Jail awaiting trial in the deaths of five other infants when she worked at local hospitals in the early 80s. Her attorney requested that the state return the Bible to her, but the district attorney's major crimes chief says they don't plan to do that at this point. Prosecutors are still evaluating the Bible's contents for possible evidence. There are some ref some handwriting of Janine Jones in her Bible, some references to children, to sin, to sort of a variety of things. I did the worst thing, in quotes, gave it all away to Satan. Today, underlined, I take it back, underlined. Well, what is, what is that referencing? You know, I don't know. Jones' trial is set for early January. Technology has changed rapidly in the past 20 years with the introduction of new digital products such as PayPal or e-filing for your yearly taxes. As time moves on, we accumulate more and more digital assets on our phones, computers, and tablets. So how can we make sure those assets end up in the right hands after we die? Web producer Ivan Herrera has some advice on how to create a plan for your digital assets in this week's Money It's Personal. Planning your estate isn't the most fun thing ever, but it's something we have to do in order to make sure our possessions end up in the right hands after we die. 
The same goes for virtual valuables, such as the funds in your PayPal or Venmo accounts or your downloadable IRS tax forms. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is offering some tips to help you create a digital asset plan. First, take inventory of your digital valuables and be descriptive for each asset you record. Make sure to note which ones will go to name beneficiaries and which ones you would like to give to someone else. Next, write down website addresses, usernames, passwords, pins, or any other sensitive information that you use to log into accounts and store them in a secure location. You can put that document in a fireproof safe or use a paid password management system. The CFPB says you should consider including information about your digital assets in your will since website terms and conditions may vary. This means it may not be enough to just give your loved one your digital asset information. Contact your attorney for advice on how to do this. If you don't have a will, the CFPB says you should consider creating one. You can give someone you know access to your assets now or at some point in the future so they can retrieve them if you die or become incapacitated. For The Nine, Ivan Herrera. And we have more information about digital assets on our website. Just visit ksat.com slash news at nine. And if you have money questions, you can submit them at the bottom of that article. Post-traumatic stress disorder affects more people than you may know. In honor of World Suicide Prevention Day, we want to know what questions you have about PTSD, whether it be warning signs, triggers, or treatment. We're going to be hosting a live streaming next week with a local doctor to get your questions answered. You can submit them right now on the homepage of ksat.com. Let's turn now to some of the biggest stories people are talking about around America. The Pentagon has approved the extension of U.S. military deployment at the southern border. Troops can now stay through the end of the 2020 fiscal year. Up to 5,500 personnel will be there for support along the border as the country experiences an influx of immigrants trying to enter the U.S. President Donald Trump has forced out National Security Advisor John Bolton. The president made the announcement in a tweet today, noting that he strongly disagreed with many of Bolton's suggestions. The president thanked Bolton for his service and said he will announce a replacement next week. For the first time in nearly a decade, the number of uninsured Americans has gone up. The Census Bureau reported today that some 27 and a half million people were uninsured last year. That's an increase of 1.9 million from the year before. It's the first time that's happened since 2009. Hey guys, meteorologist Sarah Spivey here. Today we are going to do something fun and a little bit different. So the other day, it's early September, okay? But the other day I was at my local HEV and guess what I found? Pumpkins, pumpkins in early September. Now don't get me wrong, I love a good pumpkin. In fact, embarrassingly, I still have some pumpkins on my porch from last year. But as you know, here in South Texas, we do love to celebrate pumpkin season a little prematurely. I mean, highs are still in the upper 90s in many places. So that got me thinking, what other stores are selling pumpkins this early? I'm going to try five locations, our local HEB, then I'm gonna try Target, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, and Walmart. Now my guess is of these five locations, at least four have pumpkins. Okay, now here's the deal. So when you are um, pumpkin hunting, you gotta dress the part. Now, when you're regular hunting, like deer hunting, dove hunting, people will wear camouflage to blend in with their surroundings. So I wore my most fall jumper to blend in with my surroundings. Hopefully it'll bring me luck. Here we are, H-E-B, first location. What do you know, they got pumpkins at H-E-B, right next to the summer watermelon. <laughs> All right, I'm here with Adrian. He is a service lead at the H-E-B. Now, Adrian, how many pumpkins have you seen people buy? Zero. <laughs> okay, now I'm at a location that is notorious for its fall attire, Target. Pumpkins or no? Let's find out. You see when you walk into Target is a sign for pumpkin spice lattes. Hey, okay, so surprisingly there are no pumpkins at Target, but I did get a pumpkin spice cold brew. Um, and of course there's lots of pumpkin themed things. Selling a whole heck of a lot of them. 
You know, no pumpkins at Whole Food, not even any pumpkin themed things or foods or pastries. I did, however, find one thing, pumpkin flavored baby food. Okay, so this is the face of somebody who's a little disappointed. The people at Trader Joe's were really nice and they had the most gorgeous pumpkin display, but they said, you can't take a video of it. So, um, yeah. But they definitely have a beautiful pumpkin display. Just make sure you don't take a video of it or you'll get in trouble. Alrighty everyone, I am back at KSAT, fresh off the pumpkin hunting trail, and unfortunately my theory, my hypothesis of four out of the five places having pumpkins was wrong. Surprisingly, Target did not have pumpkins, and neither did Whole Foods. The places that did have pumpkins were HEB, uh, Trader Joe's, and Walmart had the most beautiful pumpkin display. So thanks for going pumpkin hunting with me. I hope you have a wonderful fall. For the nine, I'm meteorologist and pumpkin pumpkin hunter, Sarah Spidey. South Sand ISD is looking to fill three seats on their school board after three sudden resignations. The district started taking applications today. A week ago, three board members and Superintendent Alexandro Flores resigned. An interim superintendent has been appointed until the position can be filled permanently. The school board now needs to appoint school trustees for single member districts one, two, and seven. Applications will be accepted until September 17th. The Board of Trustees plans to make their selections on the 18th. The district says the selected individuals would then serve up until November 2020. Meanwhile, Lavernia Independent School District is holding a special meeting tomorrow to discuss Superintendent Trent Lovett's future. A high school cheerleader accused him of touching her in a way that made her feel uncomfortable during a football game in Sinton a couple of weeks ago. This is not the first time Lovett has been accused of inappropriate behavior. On Friday, the Lavernia ISD Board of Trustees ended a meeting without a decision on what they want to do. Tomorrow's meeting starts at 7 p.m. All right, now let's check in with RJ Marquez, mm -hmm. who's going to talk to us about what's trending on KSAT.com. All right, uh, interesting day today, Courtney, across our website. And we start first with a story that's gotten a lot of attention, a lot of people excited about this. Barbie is coming out with a new Day of the Dead doll. Wow. So, yeah, this has kind of been a long time coming. Of course, it celebrates a uh, Mexican holiday, right. Dia de los Muertos. And um, the so basically, the Barbie honors traditions, symbols, and rituals wow. that go along with the holiday. So um, it's pretty cool because this article that we have on our website kind of explains some of the history oh, and the good. symbolism. Yeah, including the face painting and all I that. I love so that's that, yes. Very popular. Um, and, odd, and it's basically said that the toy was somewhat inspired by the Pixar film Coco. Uh, Remember, oh, yeah. I love Coco. <laughs> that was a great movie. How can you um, not love that one? Absolutely. So if you <laughs> want more information on this, head to ksat.com. Awesome. All right, uh, next story here. Uh, uh, this is a pretty interesting because Alamo City Comic Con has finally announced its okay. date for the 2019 event. Okay. And they're also changing locations. Oh, okay. So for the past few years, it's been at the uh, Gonzalez Convention Center. Right. This year, they say they are taking it to the streets and they're going to be at Sunset Station. Oh. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and St. Paul Square, yeah. So they're going to have a bunch of stuff set up. They said they're going to have kind of more like a vendor, kind of market type oh, set up. that's so. going to be so fun. Yeah. And, and um, easier for us to see costumes from yes. afar. <laughs> costumes and maybe celebs. All right. They have, yes. not, um, they have not made any official announcements on any celebrities, but uh, it'll be interesting to see who they get. Maybe Matthew McConaughey will make oh, the trip. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's hope so. <laughs> There you go. Oh, I shameless. Was, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm shameless plug. <laughs> I mean, he's right up the street, right? At every, uh, at all the UT games. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, you could get more information on KSAT.com. All right. Last story here. And this is the one that's been getting all sorts of okay. buzz. Have you seen this, Courtney? This what? asymmetrical jeans. They're is that thing. really a thing? <laughs> this isn't a joke? Yes. It, this is not a joke. It by says, all, says Neiman yes. Marcus? Yeah. So um, Neiman Marcus selling these jeans. They basically a mix of these like wide sort of bootleg jeans skinny and jeans. skinny jeans yeah <laughs> why not um so their retail price right now is for 462 dollars even marcus um and 462 dollars mm -hmm. yeah yeah and we have this like 
picture of Celine Dion wearing them where, yeah, a lot of people are just reacting to this. And your face says it all. Pretty much. I got to control my face, <laughs> yeah. but this is not the best fashion. <laughs> no, this is like just a sewing project gone oh terribly wrong. And, you know what, uh, though? <laughs> Celebrities make something popular in that just a second. That so is true. If it's yeah. your thing, it's your thing. You you, you do you. Uh, you would never, could never see yourself <laughs> wearing this? Absolutely. I don't think <laughs> okay. I could pull this off. Maybe Celine Dion, but. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, um, yeah, if you guys want more information <laughs> on this and these jeans, which I don't even know what to say about them, uh, go to our website, ksat.com. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Thank you, Courtney. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us for the news at 9 here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. Don't forget to catch us at 10 on the night beat.